right, the day's finally come. We're gonna go ahead and try to pour some bronze today. I'd like to give you guys the tour before I lock down this camera and stick it in a vise because uh, I don't believe I'm gonna have any help today filming this. Uh, what you're looking at here is my old burner furnace. Uh, this is actually the fuel source. I call it the Tower of Power. Um, basically, it's just two uh, refrigerant R22 containers. Uh, bronze or brazed onto this uh, little skeleton thing. Now the bottom tank is uh, burning jet A or diesel or kerosene or whatever I can find and see there's a little sight glass uh, stuck on the side and then up at the top we have uh, used motor oil and again it gives me an idea how much I'm actually burning. Uh, uh, important for fluid to get out of these because I do not pressurize these. I take off my, my uh, fuel caps uh, this one here runs down to the bottom tank and it gives me an easier way to fill up the, the diesel. Um, they come down through a set of, uh, I guess they're about 3 8 or half inch hoses down to some valving. And uh, this is how I pretty much control my mixture. I have two main on-offs. These do not work good for controlling mixture. I tried uh, once I switched over to these super, super high quality uh, half inch valves. Uh, life's gotten a lot better for me. Somebody gave me these. No way would I pay a hundred some bucks a valve for those guys. Uh, that uh, fuel depends on. I start on the diesel and then switch over to use motor oil once the, te uh, the temperature comes up on the therm the furnace here. The fuel comes through here into here and inside of here is just a quickie. Uh, everybody's familiar with the quickie burner. Yeah, my compressed air comes into here. This gives me an idea about what I've got for psi and uh, 15 I believe is about where I'm running now we're really really high tech here we got the the ketchup container and then for a blower at the moment I'm using a uh, hello Coco say hello to everybody this is oh thank you Coco yeah you know why a cat does that is because he can uh, this is a microwave blower motor that I scrounged up somewhere uh, it runs full tilt I don't really have to adjust uh, air uh, what I've got set up works just good and today for the first time ever I'm actually sitting on a little piece of uh, Wood stand here. So once it's up and running I can just send it there before I used to have this thing teeter-tottering on a box or What other garbage I could find? Let's look at the furnace Lid opens up and you're taking you step around the front side of the furnace and uh, down in here we have some scrap uh, bronze from one of my last last pours. It's sitting on a Cool Whip container size refractory uh, block that serves as my plinth, and it works out real good. It gives me the right the right size height from the uh, from the hole from the tree air, and uh, that is a number six. So yeah, this is going to be a lot of a lot of filling and remelting. It's going to be a real pain. Um, Looking at the top of my furnace lid, I developed a crack last time right in here. This was a ring that I had welded onto the top of the tank and had filled up the center with the refractory cement and used uh, some plastic bottle to make the hole. Uh, so this is not a good idea. Um, I may be due for a, a new furnace setup uh, a lot sooner than I had originally planned on it, but that's okay. That's okay. Uh, the bottom hole is plugged underneath the furnace. God forbid, I have a real heavy, heavy tray that lives underneath there. So if we develop a leak or something and it does make it through my plugged hole, right now it's just plugged with kale wool, then uh, we'll go from there. Let's see, over here we have some uh, bronze uh, ready to go. Another piece of, uh, another piece of scrap uh, from the jewelry box pour. Uh, always need a set of tongs for lifting stuff. I made these molds. Uh, there is actually a slight bit of draft. If you let's see if I can show it to you, there you go. You can see how the sides are kind of tipped out a little bit. This way it helps it get right out of there. Uh, big two inch uh, angle stuff. Uh, this is my tray that I use for setup. Uh, when the crucible comes out, it's going to get set on this plinth, which will be already ready to go. And uh, I'll have a piece of couple pieces of cardboard parked on here so you'll see a lot of flames that's completely normal uh, then I'll lift up lift this up and uh, slide my little lock over and that'll keep the crucible from coming out of the pouring tool here 
The actual uh, shells are going to end up going over here. This is just a bucket with a bunch of K wool, and the other one is uh, some dollar store garbage with some sand and some K wool. So I think the first two pieces I'm planning on pouring is going to be the rose and probably the not a light switch cover. Let's do a mirror. We'll do a mirror and the rose first on the first one. I'm thinking about how much bronze this is going to take. Over here is the kiln. And the kiln is a piece of garbage that I only paid 25 bucks for. Uh, it doesn't even have a hinge. And any kind of uh, electronics or timers all that other stuff that's all gone I went through the inside of this thing if some of you remember and rewired it uh, I start them both on low go to medium for you know 20 minutes or so then go to high and uh, and that's it and of course it's on a real heavy-duty 220 cord running to the back uh, you end up with these I just plug those holes with uh, some kale wool and we're gonna take a peek in here and this is gonna be screaming hot she's been going for a while so hopefully I won't melt melt my camera or my hand let's use a piece of kale wool and whoa that is really hot I'm gonna close that <laughs> oh that's hot all right and that's it uh, safety equipment well there's a garden hose around the corner uh, there's a fire extinguisher over here which isn't gonna do very much it's pretty small and uh, so that's that's what we're looking at uh, my starting procedure is definitely a little unorthodox uh, that noise you hear right now, that's just the fan I've got going off on the side. I know this is going to look strange. It may work the first time. It may take me 10 times to do it. Uh, I'm a little out of practice. It works. It's what I have to do. Don't judge. Lid open. Always. Notice it get a little more smoky. Uh, that was me enriching up the mixture, and uh, I enrich it. Start to see some smoke, and then start to lean it out just a little bit until it just kind of disappears. Uh, 
I'll be honest, this is probably one of the first daytime melts I've done in a long, long time. I prefer nighttime melts. Uh, usually there's less traffic walking by because I am in the neighborhood and there's less less chance of someone coming by and you know what do you do and all that other nonsense uh, and plus I can judge how high those flames are actually going licking outside of the top of that exhaust hole and that's really the best way to take to decide if you're, you're too rich or too lean uh, everything with me is it's either rich or lean I'm a mechanic whatever I would say right now that's about exactly where it needs to be that's going to change mixtures can change as the furnace body inside uh, gets hotter uh, i do believe it changes a little bit right now i've got those flames just kind of licking outside of the top you guys probably can't see it i'm sorry it's daytime
All right, let's give you guys a little rundown of what happened. Uh, somewhere in there you saw I poured the first mirror frame and uh, went to pour the rose and uh, that wasn't happening. I looked inside the crucible and was afraid I didn't have enough metal melted. And that's ultimately the worst. So I added another piece of ingot and went back to town on it. And uh, actually I think it was a sprue that I added. Yeah, I added a cutoff sprue from a previous melt and, uh, and then poured the second mirror frame, which are these two down here. And uh, then added the ingot and uh, finished off by uh, pouring the rose and the rose is sitting up here still cooling down and the light switch cover now you say where are the dogs uh, and the leftover piece we had was a, uh, a piece of ingot sitting down inside of my mold uh, you asked where are the dogs well the dogs are still on the workbench and uh, the dogs are uh, actually I didn't have enough room to load the two dogs the two mirror frames the rose and then the light switch cover inside the kiln I'll show you my kiln uh, and uh, I don't have any shelves and I'm not gonna play the shelf game that's a pain and uh, so the those guys are just gonna have to wait until uh, probably a couple days from now I've got uh, I've got some flying to do tomorrow and uh, now it's just time to kind of roll all this up the crucible is uh, empty and cleaned out and it's sitting down down inside of there cooling down best place for a crucible always to cool down is back inside the furnace uh, slow heat up slow heat down and uh, away it goes a little microwave blower motor doesn't sound the best but uh, we're just gonna let it keep on keep on chooching I've got another one somewhere I guess what I didn't realize was sitting here in the garage I had a uh, you know, looking a little dark I had another another ingot and some more scrap I should have should have tossed in there but sorry that one didn't happen and there's the two dogs sitting there still waiting to go back into the into the furnace but that's where they'll go and uh and we'll get moving uh we're gonna go ahead and let these guys cool down just a little longer while i wrap up some of this stuff and we're gonna get to uh break these out here shortly it's breakout time we have been looking forward to this for a long time. Uh, get comfortable, have a seat. Let's see. I think... Let me start with that one. Good pair of tongs. Road. I think we're going to do a mirror first. See, I can't tell what you guys can see or not. There we go. That looks all right. The moment of truth. Hours and hours and hours. And it all comes down to this. Right here. Hmm. Pink. Huh. OCD's favorite color. Pink. How did I end up with pink bronze? That's a different one. However, it still looks good. Looks real good. Pink! Hmm. It looks like a winner. Whoa, she's having winner, winner, chicken dinner. Work like a dream. One down. All right. 
Let's go for the second one. This is already starting to fall apart. No, I didn't make them. I can, but when you find them and they're 20 bucks, you pay the 20 bucks. So what fun is that, right? It's best to use something kind of blunt. This guy here is blunt. Keep it from dinging up your face. Once I get the majority of this off, he goes in a sandblast cabin anyways, and the rest of it just flies off with glass beads, so. All right. Number two. Good to go. Set the rose. If you're gonna whale on it, do it on the screw, <laughs> not your pace. So I don't go and dork this up. I'm gonna hold off on breaking out this lasso part here. I wanna put this on something padded, like a something hard rubber, uh, so I don't go and screw up the, the tips of the... All right, what do they call it? They actually have a name. Anyways, that little piece of the flower. So we're gonna wait. I guess it's... The Boho Bots light switch cover. God, I hope this worked. Here's a light switch cover. I'm sure you're not gonna find it. The homeless desk, <laughs> homeless despot. <laughs> I just drop it. this is going to work or not. I swear I can see a crack running across, across this thing from side to side. I can't help but now. We had it in wax. There was no crack in wax. I don't know. Not sure, buddy. Not sure. I have a crack right here at that sprue. Yeah, she's definitely got a crack right across here and there. goes through to the back too. It's a really, really fine crack. Weird, 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 weird. But the thin part, it filled. It, it did what somebody I know couldn't do. <laughs> Wild. Right. 